You, Flock of Seagulls, why don't you tell my man Mike where you got the stuff hit at? It's in the cupboard. No, 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 the one by your knees. We happy, Mike? Mike. We happy? Oh yeah, we happy. Mere moments after publishing my video on my G90 Go Box build, the comments section was flooded with people talking about, well, I would have put a Raspberry Pi in there. What are you gonna do for digital? What about FT8? Digital, 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 FT8, Raspberry Pi, digital. Even though I said in the video, I don't care about digital. Well, now, a few years later, I want, I want to get on digital. <laughs> but a Raspberry Pi is still not gonna work. It's just too big, it won't fit in there. So when I started researching getting the G90 on the air with digital, there's a few options. There's a CE19, which I have, which is a big honking piece of just chaotic mess. There is the Sabrent sound card with a bunch of cables, and then there is Digirig. Out of those three options, for me, the Digirig seemed to be the choice to go with. So I'm gonna show you how to hook up the Digirig to the Zygu G90, and I'm also gonna show you how to get it set up on the computer so you can get your G90 on the air running digital modes fast and easy. So let's have at it. So here's everything we need to make this happen. Obviously we need the Digirig itself, and you can get these cables from Digirig. This is the audio cable, this is the serial cable, and then this is the USB cable that goes to USB-C as the Digirig has a USB-C on it. And then you also have the plugs for the audio and the serial there. One thing to note about these cables, uh, I wish these were not coiled like this. Uh, I would rather have them just a long cable so I could kind of wrap it up myself. And then this USB cable here is only 15 inches long. This is the one that I need long. These two can be quite short, in fact. But something to note, I'm actually not using this USB cable. I have another USB-C cable that I'm gonna use, uh, and I'll show you that in a bit. But very, very easy to set up, so let's do that now. See, I told you there wasn't much room in here, but we have just enough right here for the Digirig to go. So the first thing we need to do is hook up the cables. First, I'm gonna hook up the audio cable. This goes to the back of the G90. And I also appreciate it might be hard to see, but this right here in the very back is the ACC. And that is where we're gonna plug this in. Next is our serial cable. And we've got this 90 degree, this is the tip ring sleeve. You also have a tip ring ring sleeve. This part connects to the Digirig. You want the 90 degree TRS to plug in to the head of the G90 next to where the little person icon is there. Now I can feed it down to the bottom. And I'm also gonna take this USB-C cable that I'm using and feed that down as well. And after a little cable management, just running some wires back here and tucking them out of the way as best I can, we're left with these three leads. Now do note, I went ahead and put a label for my audio and serial cables just so I don't get them mixed up. So we're just gonna plug the audio into the audio, the serial into the serial, and the USB-C. I'm gonna tuck it all in there, just like that. Snug as a bug in a rug. And after tucking the USB-C cable underneath, everything is neat and tidy. So you can see everything has a home. Simple, clean, efficient. So the first thing we're gonna need to do to get this to work on our computer, we need FL Rig. You absolutely have to have FL Rig to the work. So let's go to Google, type in FL Rig, Download, hit enter, and we are looking for this one, this sourceforge.net. You're gonna click on this green one right here that says download latest. You'll have to wait five seconds here or whatever it says and uh, download, okay? So once that downloads, open up your downloads folder and you'll have this program right here. Just double click it, 
If you get this uh, protected thing, just hit more info and hit run anyway, and that'll follow you through the installation wizard. I've already done it, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. Hopefully, you know how to install the program. Next, I'm going to turn on the G90 and go ahead and plug in the USB. And we need to find out which port it is. So let's go to our device manager. And we're going to go down to ports, comms, LPT. And we're looking for this Silicon Labs USB to UART bridge. For me, it's COM11. If you unplug the USB, it'll go away. So if you don't know which COM it is, uh, see how it just went away. You can see, like, find the missing one. Then you can plug it back in and it'll come back again. Just like that. So now we know we're COM11. Uh, for me, I had a heck of a time getting FL Rig to work. I'm going to show you the solution right now. What was happening is once I turned on FL Rig, the radio went immediately into transmit mode and just locked up there. And FL Rig just was locked and crashed and all kinds of things. So nothing good happened. So very special thanks to YouTube channel Ernie Tech for showing us how to fix this because I would have never figured that out. So with the radio off, we need to open FL Rig. We're going to get an error. That's a good thing, actually. Open up config, setup, transceiver. We're going to go to uh, all the way to the bottom is where you'll find the Zygu G90. And then we're going to select our COM port. Our baud rate is 19,200. Now on my FL rig, RTS 12 volt and DTR 12 volt were checked to make sure those are unchecked. And we also want to make sure we have two stop bits connected. And uh, this echo was recommended to turn on. I, I don't think it makes a lick of difference one way or the other. But once we have this set up, we're also going to make sure that our retries are at 2, our timeout is at 2, our commands are at 2, and our poll interval is at 200. We can go ahead hit and hit init for initialize. It's going to try and connect to the radio, but the radio is not turned on, so it's not going to happen. That's a good thing. We've just set up FL Rig to do what we need it to do. It seems weird, but this is how it works. The next thing we want to do is open up control panel and we're going to go to hardware and sound. We're going to go over to manage audio devices and you can see I have Digirig here. Now yours might say microphone, but you're looking for USB PNP sound device. I have renamed mine to say Digirig to make it easier to find. And we need to set this, by default, Windows is going to automatically make this sound card your, your main device. You need, to, you need to right click speakers and enable that as your default device. Right click on the USB PNP sound device, hit properties. And here's where you can rename it. It just said microphone from the factory, so I renamed it Digirig. We also need to go over to uh, levels. Now, they recommend having it set to like 20. I have mine all the way up. Your results may vary. You'll, you might have to mess with that a little bit. We're also going to select this recording tab. Again, we're going to right click this and we want to enable this as default communications device. So under playback and recording, your speakers are under default device. Your digirig is default communication device. Under recording, your microphone is a default device. And your digirig is the default communications device. Under recording as well, we need to right click on the digirig. Go to properties. Under this listen tab, you want to uncheck listen to this device. And under custom, they say to uncheck this AGC. I leave this on and I'm having uh, great results. And then under levels, they recommend having this on 20. Hit OK. You should be good with all your audio settings. The next thing we want to do is change a couple settings on the radio itself. So we're simply going to press the function button. Hit the power button twice. And you can see we have input here now. Uh, you're probably going to be on mic. We want to make sure that's online. And you just use your VFO to select that. And then you can push the VFO in to save that change. Then let's go ahead and long press the function button to get into the deeper menu. And we're going to go over to menu 5, I believe it is. Yep. And the aux in volume, mine is set at 8. And my aux out volume is set at 15. These are the settings that work for me. Your mileage may vary. You may need to, to mess around with those a little bit. But I've been very happy with those. Now, we may need to close FL Rig at this point and open it up. So I'm going to do that. And let's open up WSJTX. And once we're in here, we can go to File, Settings, 
Under radio, we're going to select this drop down box, scroll down until you see FL rig, FL rig, and go ahead and select that. We should have cat checked. And I like to have data packet selected for mode and fake it for split operation. Then we want to go over to this audio tab, look for the USB PNP sound device. I renamed mine Digirig earlier, so it's easy to spot. And USB PNP sound device for output. And both of these should be on left. Go back under the radio tab. Now we can hit test cat. We get a green light. That's a good thing. We can hit test PTT, and sure enough, on the radio, it is testing PTT. Hit OK. We should be good to go. So theoretically, we have cat control. We can change the bands and make some FT8 contacts. So if we hop over to 20 meters here, we can already see some signals coming in on the waterfall. Everything is working as planned, and it's beautiful. The last thing we want to do just to be a good steward of amateur radio, we want to go ahead and hit the tune button. And as we do, we'll notice the ALC on the radio is at 100. We want to get that uh, a little under 100 so you can adjust your slider and you can see uh, it going up and down. So somewhere near 100. Now we're getting the 15.3 watts out. I have the radio set at 15 watts. Everything's good. We're under 100 on the ALC, so we're not splattering and causing uh, excess bandwidth being taken up. So always be a good steward of amateur radio. That's all we got for today, guys. Thanks again to Dennis at Digirig. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at K8MRD, and we'll see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.